Welcome to Forgotten Coast Fishing. My name is David and I fish inshore and offshore showing you what I do to find and catch fish. If that sounds appealing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss my future videos. So as you can probably see behind us, we've got a good bit of fog and this time last year during these same kind of conditions, I got out and caught some nice amberjack. So we're going to try that again. So stay with us and we'll see if we can pull some up. Alright, so what I'm going to start out with for these amberjack, I've got this two ounce bullet style jig head with an eight inch gotcha white curly tail. And I'm just going to drop this down, just starting to vertical jig it, just to see if we can pull up an amberjack. I don't have any live bait, I do have some frozen things, but if we don't get any amberjack, I'll probably put out a light chicken rig with some small hooks to see if maybe we can't pull some tom tates up or something like that and get that on our big rod and reel over there for our amberjack. Amberjacks also like these bucktail jigs, and I've got one tied up. This is an ounce of spro jig, and if I start seeing them come to the surface, I'll start throwing that out, and we can get a bite closer to the surface, which is a certainly fun, oh man. Oh man, man, I'm sitting here giving you the lowdown, and I'm getting, oh man, oh no, he's still here. Oh geez, oh man, man, this was, this was our first drop. Oh, I don't want him to get in the reef. All right, so let's see if I can pull it up tight enough to drag. Tighten up the drag a little bit. Wow, man, this is some action right off the bat. I was just still giving you the, the gear breakdown, not even working this jig. It was just sitting on the bottom. Man, this is incredible. What is this? Is it, it is an amberjack. All right, man, check him out. Or is it an albaco? Let's check him out and see. Oh man, it's a greater amberjack. Check it out, everybody. Wow, man, that is called a plan coming together in the most desirable way. Holy cow, I was not even trying to work this jig. I had barely even gotten the boat set. I was still telling you about my gear and this amberjack comes and catches this curly tail. Man, that is awesome awesome way to start the day all right check this dude out now this is a greater amberjack i thought it might be an almaco jack at first but this guy's too slender and his dorsal fin is not quite tall enough to be an almaco because they do look a lot alike now these guys are not in season and this guy would not be big enough so let's get him down they've got to be 34 inches to keep and I didn't even measure him, but he was probably only 18, 20, 20 something. So man, like I said, wow, that was a great day to start the morning. So let's get this jig back out there and see if we can catch another one. This is my Pin Battle 6000. And this is a Shimano Talus PX heavy spinning rod. And this is 40 pound braid on here. And I believe I've got 60 pound mono for my leader, about six, eight feet of it. Oh, oh, here he is. Oh man, I was trying a different technique. I was, whoa, man. All right, this is a bigger one. Oh man, this is a bigger one. Oh, oh man, much bigger one. All right, much bigger one. Wow, I was, oh, don't get off. Oh, don't get off. I gotta get him from that reef. Just gotta get some line back to get him away from that reef because he gets down. Oh, man. Oh, shoot. Man, this is a bigger one. Man. All right. Oh, gosh. Man, I'm afraid he's going to get down to that reef. Man. Uh, oh, I could just... Ah, oh, man, he broke it. Man, that's the thing about amberjacks. They're hard to keep from getting down to that reef. And once that line taps that reef it's gonna break it where did he get me he got me at the leader wow that was a much bigger amberjack so i used a little bit different technique to hook that last amberjack instead of pulling back on the rod and letting it fall i did more of a reel retrieve i went one two three kind of thing on the reel and that seemed to get that amberjack really quickly once i started doing it so i'm all the way at the bottom 
So I'm gonna try that again, just kind of doing a, about a one and a half or two turn there. Oh, and he's right there again, man. All right, all right. So the first part I wanna do, oh man. The first thing I wanna do is try to get him up, try to get as much line as I can to get him away from that reef so that he doesn't break off again. And I'm just in open water. So maybe I can, oh, oh man, he got off. Jeez. Well, you see that technique is working really well. Let's check everything. Maybe he didn't really have the hook because he seemed to try to pull my jig off. Man, he kind of ripped it up a little bit. Let's see if we can salvage it. Now, let's go ahead and change. All right, so I'm at the bottom. So this is our drop number three. So I'm gonna just do what I was doing before, like a one and a half turn, let it stop for a second and let the jig kind of settle down. Amberjack like, there we go. Oh man, I got off again. Let's see if he comes back. Let's drop it back down. Man, Amberjack like something kind of darting around fast. So kind of the faster you work this, it seems like you're gonna get more strikes. A lot of times I'll catch these guys just reeling my jig in just to kind of check it. Here he is. Oh man. Oh geez. This is that big one again. All right. Let's see if I can keep him off the reef. Oh man. Oh man. <sighs> All right, man. This is just nonstop amberjack action. Holy. Oh, man. I think this is a little bit smaller than those last couple ones we hooked. So maybe I have a chance of getting him in. There he goes. All right, man. If you can get that head pointed up, get that head turned so he's not diving down to the reef. Man, and, and keep that, keep that going where he's constantly, oh man, if he makes a turn on you, oh, geez, I think I'm, oh man, geez, this is rough on my wrist. All right, oh, here comes my leader. Man, I was a lot further up than I thought. That was good. So I was probably working too hard. Yeah, man, look at this amberjack. Oh man, same size as that other one. Wow, you can see how I'm struggling just to get these guys in. Imagine one two or three times this big and they have to be close to twice this size to even keep Man, these are some strong Strong pulling fish. What do you think of that one Harry? It's almost as big as you it's as heavy as you So he's about 23 inches we would need one another 11 inches to keep and they get heavier and stronger exponentially every inch Man, there he goes. Man, check our fog's about to roll back in. We had gotten out of it, you know, when we came away from shore a good ways, but it looks like it's rolling back on us. Man, those are fun fish to catch. I like that size right there. You saw me struggling. My wrist was kind of bent, but man, those are fun. He got my last curly tail. Oh man, that's a bummer. Let's see what else I've got. We may just switch to a metal slow pitch jig well let's see what we got in our tackle box okay so i didn't have any more curly tail type plastics but i've got this bucktail and i've got several of these but this is a different kind this has kind of this flat head that you can see i forget what brand it is i'll look it up and leave the link down in the description so what it's designed to do with that flat head is when it falls it's going to kind of flutter a little more so maybe that does as good as those curly tails. We'll certainly see. This will just be, if nothing else, a good test just to kind of see what works best for these amberjack when they're fired up. Oh, here he is. All right, man. All right, so far it doesn't make a difference. All right, and I think he was a little ways up too. I'm gonna just see if I can hold him tight because I think I'm far enough away from the reef. Let's see if we can just hold him for a second. Get him a little tired, kind of work him up as we can. There's a couple ways to get these guys up. You can haul some up if you've got bigger gear. Right now I don't. So it's not gonna be able to hoss these guys up, especially these bigger ones. So the other option, kind of let the reel do more of your work. Don't rely so much on the rod. Point it down, just kind of bring it in when you can. Now that's only gonna work if he's away from the reef so that you, you know, he's not gonna break you off. If he's right next to that reef, you got to work real hard to get him up. All right. Man, this guy maybe. Oh, man, he wasn't ready. I ought to put my gloves on. Oh, man, he's a little bit bigger than the other one. 
another two or three or whatever we've gotten so far. Man, look at this guy. Oh, I love catching amberjack. Now we're not putting any in the box, but man, these are some fun fish to catch. Oh look, he didn't even get it in the mouth. He was just kind of darting at it, looks like, and it got him outside of the mouth. Yeah, he was about that same 23 inches. All right, well, let's get him back. Man, see if we can do a good torpedo. Not really. So it really didn't seem to matter what kind of jig we have down there. That's good because I'm out of curly tails, but I got several of these bucktail jigs and I have some, you know, metal type slow pitch jigs. So I think we're set as long as we don't start getting into some monsters that break us off every one we get but these are those kind of fun size in the mid 20s or so that can be handled by this smaller outfit oh here he is all right all right oh man mm. Let's see if i can get this one up oh man it's so hard to tell i feel like they're all gonna be bigger than that last one but I, oh man but i think this one is all right, so I'm gonna hope I'm far enough up from the reef. I'm not gonna really try to toss them in too much as maybe get a little bit of oomph out of them so that I can handle them a little better. So yesterday at the Emerald Coast Boat Show, I met Mark with 30A light tackle charters out of Destin. And we were talking a good bit about this light tackle fishing for these bigger fish. And he gave me a lot of hints. One of them was that you know letting your reel do more of the work you know if your rod's not able to handle these fish the other was what i was just doing and hopefully oh man this is a bigger one hopefully i'll have a chance to to demonstrate but one of the ways to get these guys up if you have this light tackle is to kind of steer them in once you kind of get off that reef a little bit and you're not afraid of them getting in you can kind of pull them this way and pull them this way and pull them this way and just slowly work them up to the surface like that and i think what he was saying is that doesn't put so much pressure on them that they don't have that tendency to want to dive back down they're just kind of swimming with you a little bit kind of not sure what's going on and that's actually what i did with this last one and it was actually easier to bring them in so let's get this fish off and get him back in the water man there you go there he goes. So I'm, I like this real retrieve technique because I'm constantly working this jig towards the surface. So hopefully they kind of spot it on the bottom then follow it up a little bit so that when I get that strike, like I said, I'm further away from the reef and I can kind of work them, you know, without having to hoss them up so much. Plus it's really effective. Oh, here he is. Oh man, here he is. All right let's see if all right so i do think i was up and he's a good ways up from the reef so i'm gonna try that steering him technique like captain mark of 30a light charters told me about just kind of going back and forth kind of taking line up just when i can steering him this way yep and it seems like when i get him on the the kind of far edges he he does kind of release a little bit Yep, and I can get another turn or two. Yeah, so this is kind of cool. Oh. <sighs> Didn't get him that. There we go. So you just kind of feel when he lightens up, kind of take advantage of that and reel in some line a little bit. <sighs> All right. Man, I need a longer arm to get these guys in with this long leader. Wow. Nice mid 20s amberjack again. Yeah, so that steering technique, that was kind of cool. I think basically kind of what the deal is you just don't want to kind of panic and be in so much of a hurry you know by steering them back this way you just kind of feel when you can grab some line back and just kind of take those opportunities captain mark was also saying you know by steering them back and forth you're kind of keeping a lot of that water moving over their gills as opposed to them diving down and you fighting them you know when they're sitting here pretty much at a standstill like this as you're pulling them up you know there's no water going through their gills so that's another reason you know to kind of keep those fish healthy oh here he is man they just kind of 
it's kind of strange they just oh man well that was obviously a bigger one they just sort of they they hit that fall obviously which is where they're going to hit that jig most often they're not going to chase it up when it's moving they're going to let it start to fall where it's just kind of easier to grab i guess but it's kind of strange you just sort of it's almost just like they hop on your jig you know as more as opposed to a you know just a, a pull and run kind of thing well what did he get here he broke my braid so either it was frayed a little bit or i was real close to the reef or you know part of him might have touched it but that was a big one for sure all right so sometimes when you start catching amberjack like this they'll start coming up to the surface and you can throw things like this little small bucktail jig at them which is what i'm going to do now all right so i'm just going to cast this out a good ways our reef is somewhere over here about 30 feet from from the corner of this boat so i've cast it over here since this is just an ounce weight it's going to take some time to to sink and by the time it gets to the bottom hopefully it'll kind of be over there close to the reef but i'm showing some excellent marks on the depth finder so really i think there's fish all around us so this is just my pin battle 5000 and this is a shimano talus px medium heavy so this is even lighter than what we were working with before so definitely if we get one of those amberjack again we're gonna have to kind of baby that in a little bit all right so i think we're close to the bottom if not on the bottom i'm just gonna work this almost like i'm doing a topwater inshore oh here he is yep yep man just a real all right all right let's tighten up this drag is all right so we're hopefully up above the reef and i don't think this is quite as a big one as the biggest one we've caught today so that's actually kind of good man so like i was saying i was just working this like a topwater a reel and a you know and a jerk and a reel and a jerk and man that just grabbed this amberjack ah this is a one ounce spro jig on the end of here and i think i've got somewhere around 60 pound mon oh man he broke off man i thought i had him i know he wasn't on the reef i think he just broke this leader like i said i think this is i this may even be 40 pound test i'm gonna go ahead and go up to 60 pound just to be sure that's what it is this this doesn't feel like 60 it feels more like 40 yep because he broke it right there close to the hook all right i got another one ounce pro jig tied on this time with 60 pound leader and you know you might say well why not just go up to 80 or 100 pound well when throwing this one ounce jig head if you have 80 pound or even a hundred pound type of leader it's just too thick and heavy and it's just not going to have that action i don't think with the jig so i think a 60 is a good compromise but unfortunately this is my last pro jig so hopefully we can get one up and not lose it here he is here he is oh man okay all right i don't think he's near as big as those other guys which is actually kind of nice because i don't want to lose this last pro jig right off the bat and i think he's close to the boat as it is anyway here he is oh yeah what have we got oh man this may be an alico let's check him out no no just a small greater amberjack but look at that man you saw even with this little guy you saw the power he had when i was trying to bring him in well, this guy was fun to catch man let's go ahead and get him back yeah that guy was the size of an of of what could have been an almaco that's why i thought it might be an almaco almaco look almost exactly like a greater amberjack they're just not as big they're you know if you get something like this you know it's a greater amberjack but something like this size you know you always kind of have to take a check to see if it's an almaco or an amberjack now i've done on other videos where i've showed you the difference but the easiest way to tell is the almaco have more of a rounded body where the greater amberjack are more torpedo shaped but really the thing i also look for is the dorsal fin on the dorsal fin on an almaco jack it seems to be higher or taller where the amber jacket's a little shorter but maybe we'll pull up one of those almacos and we can show the difference so let's do this spro jig a couple more times see if we can get those amber jack to start pulling up and then we'll put a chugger topwater type lure 
on our bigger rod and reel. We'll see if we can't get a strike on the surface. Oh, man. It's, oh, here he is. It's kind of, oh man. Uh, it's kind of funny how they'll tap it. And it's just like you inshore guys that use top water for trout. The trout sometimes will come up and just bat that top water around, you know, almost like they don't, like it's a threat or they don't want it around, you know, and, and eventually they'll get hooked, but a lot of times they'll just bat that. And that's kind of what these amberjack are doing. It's like they'll hit it a couple times before they get hooked. Now, I don't know what that really means. They may just not be getting hooked, but it's happened several times with this bucktail type jig. Man, this is a bigger one. Or is my arm just getting tired? My arm is tired, y'all. So that could be it. Oh, here's my leader. All right, look at this guy. Oh man, he is bigger. Check this amberjack out. Man, this is so much fun. So much fun on this light tackle. All right, let's see what this guy measures. Yeah, so he's 25 and a half. So I think this may be our biggest one of the day. 25 and a half inches long. Oh, oh man. Oh geez, this is a bigger one. All right. I think I was a good ways up too. Man, he came and just snatched it. Came and just snatched it. Mm. All right. Uh. Uh. Man. Oh, oh no, don't get in the engine. Man, we got this one up quick. You saw me really working to do that steering technique. And before you knew it, he was up. I kind of let him get his head turned at the end here because my leader's so short at this point. But man, check him out, man. Just thick down there. Just thick. Wow. Oh, there he goes. Now that we've gotten a couple amberjack up in the water column, I'm gonna get this popper out real quick and see if we can't get one that way. All right, this is about my fourth cast in the same area. And I think what I'll do, instead of fan casting around, I'm just gonna work this same area over and over with the theory being that, you know, if they think this is maybe a school of fish up here, you know, biting some bait fish or something or whatever the activity they think it is, if I keep doing it in the same spot, you know, that'll over and over, maybe that'll kind of get their attention and draw them to this one spot as opposed to, you know, all over the place. I don't know, we'll see. But definitely it's rougher than I would like to be doing this, but these guys are on fire and biting everything. So I'm hoping maybe one will come up and grab this. No luck with that second attempt to get those amberjack. And I've caught a lot of them. Arms a little on the tired side. So I'm going to go ahead and head on back to the house so we have time to clean the boat. And we'll see you there. All right, we made it back to the house. Want to go ahead and get the Grady cleaned up. I'm going to show you some of the products I'm going to be using. These are all by the Better Boat Company. The first thing I want to tackle is these squid stains over here. And what we're going to be using is this spray hole cleaner. And how it works is you spray it on, let it sit for a few minutes, maybe scrub it if you need to, and then rinse it off. All right, so let's go ahead and get some spray on here and let that be sitting for a few minutes. And while that's sitting, I wanna kinda of show you the other things I'm gonna be using. First off, I'm gonna use this deck cleaner. So this is designed to work on these non-skid decks. And what it does, it kinda of gets in all those little crevices and things that, that make up your um, non-skid, kinda of lift it up so you can wash it down. The other thing I'm gonna be using for the outside of the boat or the hull of the boat um, is this boat soap. Now it says you only have to use one capful for a whole gallon of water, so this is very concentrated. So now that that spray hole cleaner is kind of set there for a few minutes, I'm gonna be using these boat erasers. Let's kind of give it a shot. I've already kind of worked on some of this area and it is doing very nicely. Look at that, it just took it away. Look, right there. See, it's just taking that stuff away. Squid is some of the toughest stuff to get out. So any kind of lightening of it, I would be happy, but this is taking it all away. Check it out, it's gone. 
There's a little bit right there, but that was a big stain right there. Let's let some let that sit a little more. There's some right here. Gone. Man, I've been searching for different things trying to get this squid ink off and I think I found it. All right, I just want to kind of show you what it looks like after I've finished. What I did is I sprayed that spray hull cleaner down, let it sit, and then kind of went through and scrubbed the tough areas where there was a lot of squid. And as you can see what it looked like before, and now this is what it looks like afterwards. Man, so much nicer. All right, so I got the boat all cleaned up. And overall, I'm really impressed with these products that, that the Better Boat Company sent me, especially that spray hull cleaner. Like I said, I've been struggling trying to get that squid off. And with the combination with that spray hull cleaner and those boat erasers, man, it took it away. So I'm super pleased about that. Like I said, those links will be down in the description so you can get some for yourself as well as get 10% off. But if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you won't miss my future videos. So until next time, hope to see you on another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing.